Hello, everybody. Welcome to our webinar, How to Accelerate Your Career with Digital Personal Branding. It's so nice to see so many of you. Can everybody hear me okay? You can just shake your head. We are going to use the chat. Hi. We're going to use the chat to communicate if because if we have everybody's microphone on there's going to be a lot of interference and I want to make sure that you can all hear me okay so first of all a big huge thank you to everybody for being able to uh, join me live I know that this has been probably an effort for all of you guys so I'd like to thank you so a big warm welcome from Zurich we are uh, SSBR the Swiss School of Business Research uh, some of you already know us previously. For others, this is the first time that you are ever experiencing SSBR in person. So nice to meet you. I'm going to share my screen and we can begin right away. Okay, so uh, can everybody see my screen? Great. So today we're going to talk about digital personal branding and how you guys can stand out from the others in order to uh, become more successful. So uh, I want to give you first a little bit of a brief introduction about me. Who am I? My name is Laura Perez Silvestri. I'm a, I'm a PhD mentor here at SSBR. And I also am a higher, I'm a higher uh, learning institution professor here at SSBR. My specialty is in marketing. I actually studied marketing in a business school in Barcelona, EADA, and I originally come from New York City where I studied uh, media studies. My bachelor's degree is in media studies in the New York City University of Queens College. After I completed my master's degree, I moved on to uh, the multinational um, pharmaceutical industry where I became a product manager at a pharmaceutical company. And then after that, I actually moved on and began my own small business. I had a small business uh, dedicated to destination wedding planning in Barcelona for over 12 years. I then sold the company, this is pre-pandemic, and have then uh, focused a lot more on becoming a professor, which is really one of the things that I love to do, share my knowledge and um, be able to help people grow. And this is why I'm here today. So first we're gonna be uh, thinking about how to market yourself because basically digital, digital branding or personal branding is basically marketing yourself in the digital world. So exactly how can we go about this? Well, first it's necessary to think how um, for the majority of us, and I include myself here, we find it difficult to sell ourselves. We think that it's bragging or we think that it's exaggerating. Many of us have been educated by our families to not um, talk about yourself or give too much importance for yourself. But when we are looking to uh, advance in our careers, looking to make a way for ourselves in, in a specific field, it's very important that we understand how we can sell ourselves. I think somebody has their microphone on. If you could please turn off your microphones, that would be fantastic. Thank you. Many of us also um, live with the imposter syndrome on a day-to-day -day basis. We feel like we are not actually as successful as others or that we don't, we don't have the credit to get all of this success or merits. Many of us also have the fear of failure. We are worried that we're never gonna become what it is that we've set out to become. We're never gonna achieve our goals. And yet there are others who have a fear of success. We actually are fearful of being able to achieve those dreams and being able to realize uh, those dreams and develop our full potential. But at the end of the day, it's important for us to know that it's, it's very important to learn how you can overcome these obstacles and find a way to strike a balance between uh, selling yourself, promoting yourself and bragging and exaggerating. So 
Uh, today, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we can do to overcome that. So we're going to uh, focus on personal branding. And what is pro personal branding? Well, personal branding, it's, it's very similar to a business brand, but taken to you, taken to an individual level. Basically, a personal brand or personal branding is how you promote yourself. Basically, what you are looking to do is you are looking to showcase your unique combination of skills, the experience that you've had either professionally or uh, personally, and the type of personality that you have and that you want the world to, to see. It reflects the way that you conduct yourself. It reflects your behavior. It reflects both spoken and unspoken words and the attitudes that you have. So personal branding in a nutshell is the way that you differentiate yourself from others. So when we are thinking about how we are to use or enhance our personal branding, it's important that we understand how recruiters um, look for uh, candidates when they are looking for people to join their workforce. And as we can see here, this is a recruiting funnel. And as we can see here, there are three major digital platforms that are used in order to recruit people. The first major platform is LinkedIn, then uh, followed by Facebook and then finishing off with Twitter. So we're gonna be taking a look at these three platforms with a specific focus on LinkedIn, because that is where the majority of the things will actually happen. And when recruiters are looking for um, candidates, what are they looking for? Well, many times after they have actually received a CV of a person, they go to social media to find out more about that person. The very first thing that people want to understand when they are, when they are deciding on interviewing somebody is whether or not that person is, is for real shall I say. It's basically, does that person actually have the qualifications to do the job that they're saying that they can do? Then they also take a look to see if the person has a professional online persona. What does that mean? That's a very elaborate way of saying whether or not that person has a person, uh, has a professional profile on the net. Then they also want to take a look at and see what other people are saying about that specific person and then they also are looking to see if there are any telltale signs or warning signs that they should be aware of as to why they shouldn't hire this candidate at all. So as you can see, the majority of the things, or shall I say all of these things can be found on LinkedIn, which is why it's so important for you to be able to understand and become an expert at using LinkedIn to promote yourself. So how can we get the most of our personal branding? Well. The first thing we have to do is first uh, go back one step and think, okay, well, how do I find out uh, to begin with if I have a personal brand already? Okay, well, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna Google your name. And so what comes up? Well, I Googled my name and this is what came up. Out of all of the results on the very first page, all of these are already, are specifically about me. And as you can see, the very first two hits on Google are specific to LinkedIn and they are specific to uh, the work that I am doing now, which is great because that means that my personal branding is being done correctly. Then the third hit is my, is my Facebook page. Then the, the fourth and final uh, result are information about me as a business person because these are, these are portals uh, referring to people who are business owners. And so if I look up on images, I also see that there, uh, that there is information here about um, things that I have been involved in. Or for example, here we can see this is an article that I wrote. This is a, an, a course that I gave. So again, I can see that my personal branding has been, when I've Googled my name, it's more or less in line with what I am looking to uh, showcase. So what is it? You need, to be, you need to be doing for you to understand if you are doing your personal branding correctly. Analyze and understand whether or not the information that you find when you Google your name is in, is in keeping with what it is that you want to show the professional world. If you want to be taken uh, seriously, let's say as an HR 
um, recruiter. And what you want to do is then what you want to do is ensure that that information is appearing at the very first result when you Google your name as a LinkedIn profile, for example. If this is not what you were finding, that's, that's okay because you're always, you will always have um, a moment in which you can actually improve this and that's why you guys are here. So you're already doing the first step. Basically what you want to do is make your online presence more presentable, more in keeping with the professional image that you want to, that you want to show the world. And that's what I'm going to show you today. Step two, make sure that you use your social media platforms strategically. What does that mean? Well, we've just seen that there are three different uh, recruitment funnels, or shall we say uh, platforms that the recruiters use when they are looking for possible candidates or when they are looking to see if that person is one of the most qualified for that specific job. So it's important that we use these social media platforms strategically. So we're gonna take a look at them in the reverse order. First, we're gonna take a look at Twitter. So with Twitter, you can use it to connect with experts that are well-known in your industry or in the industry that you want to enter. For example, if you are uh, an entrepreneur, then you may want to look at and follow other entrepreneurs, or perhaps you will want to look at and follow people who are leaders and are, um, shall we say, paving the way for success in the specific industry that you want to enter or that you are a part of. Engage with these people, connect with them. Don't feel like, oh, well, they're not gonna know who I am. No, no. Use that to your advantage. Connect with them, try to create a more personal relationship, even though it is uh, social media, where they can be a part of your network and you can be a part of theirs. So uh, connect with them on their posts, talk about their tweets, comment on their tweets, take their tweets and retweet them to your own network and also use the information that they are um, that they are posting. Use that as inspiration of the content that you tweet. For Facebook, it's important to note that it's much more interactive than other platforms like Twitter, for example, and it's also got heightened privacy settings. So you will have to be able to understand what privacy settings you have set in your specific um, Facebook page or Facebook personal uh, page in order to see if there will be people who will actually be able to see if you have a closed, if you have a, um, a Facebook profile that is private and that only your, your uh, friends can see, then of course, it's not going to be easy for you to promote yourself on Facebook because basically people who are not in your network won't be able to see your content since you have that privacy status. So make sure that the privacy status that you have in your Facebook is in alignment with what it is that you want to promote. If you want to promote yourself and make yourself visible to people who are outside of your circle, then make sure that you change the privacy settings as well. So what can you do on Facebook? Well, besides checking your privacy settings, do the same thing. There are closed groups in Facebook. There are uh, open groups in Facebook. There are uh, marketplaces. There are many specific groups in Facebook that are uh, specific to an industry or a, a profession or interests. So become part of these communities and then make sure that you also attempt to connect with the experts in your industry. So just like in Twitter, but now you can be doing this in different and diverse groups. And of course, be very vocal, be active, participate in those groups so that people can see that you have a genuine interest and that you know about what it is you're talking about. So what kind of groups can you join? Well, for example, see with, uh, in my case, since I'm a marketing enthusiast lover, and that's what I do, um, I, one of the one of the groups that I'm a part of is ClickFunnels group in, in Facebook. And so I'm on there and I talk, to, I talk about things. I connect with other people who use these kind of uh, tools. And this way I can, uh, people learn and know more about me. And then LinkedIn. LinkedIn, as we saw, was the top, um, the top part of the funnel. It's one of the biggest and most important tools that are used in the recruitment process. So you must have a personal 
uh, LinkedIn page. I'll talk to you in a few minutes about how it is that you can use LinkedIn to your advantage. But basically, LinkedIn, and as opposed to other social media platforms, is based on creating a professional network. So here you will create a professional profile, including and uh, a specific and detailed CV. It allows you to look for work. You can upload photos and videos and also write posts, articles, and create surveys. And it's for professional networking only. What does that mean? Don't post up content that's about your dog and you wanna share it with your auntie. That should be going on a different kind of social media platforms. LinkedIn also allows you to get badges and certifications. You can get endorsements from people who have worked for you, recommendations from colleagues, et cetera. It's much more interactive than other platforms. And as with Facebook, it also has closed groups and other kinds of uh, open and closed groups that you can use. So as is this the case with um, Facebook, here you can also connect with experts that are well-known in your industry. You can also follow experts in your industry without actually having to be a direct content. For example, I follow Oprah Winfrey on uh, my LinkedIn, but I'm not actually part of her professional network. I just find that her content is very interesting and very insightful. And so whenever she publishes content, I get that on my feed. So this is another, another um, brand that I follow on LinkedIn, which is the Chronicle of Higher Education, where it's a newspaper very, very specific to the niche uh, industry that I belong to, which is higher education. Another thing that you can do is write guest posts on industry-related publications. So what does that mean? Use uh, all of those publications or communities or groups that are specific to the industry that you are in to become very active in it. So you will find, you can Google, for example, um, like, I, like you saw click funnels. You can say, okay, well, um, digital marketer communities, and you can look them up and you can identify the ones that, are, that have the most participations and that are very specific to your niche. And here you can collaborate with them. They usually ask for people to write guest posts like uh, articles, or other kinds of things. This allows you to establish your credibility and actually increase your value because now the people who are going to be looking at your, at your online persona or your personal brand are going to see that not only do you have a great online presence in terms of social media, but also you are actually providing value to other communities who are specific about what it is that you do. So this is a very powerful, and very useful way to use and get the most of personal branding. There are uh, websites like Topsy, for example, where, you, where it allows you to search and analyze the web and identify those niche uh, communities. You can also connect with people in groups and forums. Even before social media, we were already a very social culture, and this was already happening online. There were groups, chat rooms, forums, et cetera, where people would, uh, would meet due to similar interests, for example. And the, there are some of these um, groups that are still one of the biggest communities online. So again, use them to your advantage. Search for these communities in your industry. So you can do these kind of searches and actually go on Google and search brackets, your niche, let's say, um, digital marketer forum and see what results come up, or you can replace forum with community or online and see what kind of results come up so that you can connect with people. I searched digital marketing and here we go. This is, as you can see here, digital marketing community. And so here you can sign up. Now you have understood how you can use personal branding to your benefit. You have understood how we can use social media strategically, how important it is for you to understand if you have a good online presence after you have Googled your name, what you can do to improve it. And now it's time to shine. Now it's time to stand out from the others. And how can we do that? Well, there are a number of skill sets and other types of um, assets that you can get and showcase in your, in your LinkedIn profile and everywhere else to show how you are much uh, superior than others in your field. So the first thing is having soft, having soft skills. And 
In case you guys are not familiar with what soft skills are, there is a difference uh, in recruitment between soft skills and hard skills. Hard skills are all of those uh, skills that you acquire in a degree, for example. So hard skills would be, um, let's say, um, business research or hard skills would be uh, learn how to uh, write a thesis. This is something, this is a technical skill that you have learned and acquired elsewhere. Soft skills are not so industry related, but are skills that are available and useful in any kind of field that you are that you are looking to enter, in any kind of position, be it the entry level position or the CEO, and they are applicable and useful in all aspects of your life, not just in not just in university, not just in a master's program, and not just in the uh, professional life. And actually, I've included here a survey that was done to a number of uh, recruiting agencies, and they have seen that out of the top 10 most in-demand soft skills, the very first one is communication skills. And the eighth is interpersonal communication, which is a part of communication skills. So it's one of the most important things that we need to develop in order to stand out from the others. So how can we develop communication skills? Well, first, let's take a look at what we find when we search on LinkedIn for these kinds of skills. Well, here I've just put two, two different job postings, but basically you can see how important communication skills is. So for this first, this first um, job posting for a client management, we can see that there are three, three of the six requirements that, allow, that um, ask that you have good uh, communication skills. So you have to be able to read a room and adapt communication for different people. You have to have great communication skills, both spoken and written, and be able to communicate with confidence. And you have to be able to convey ideas and information in a clear way, in writing and verbally, in all types of settings. And here, for another kind of job, we can see that of the four requirements, the third one is impeccable verbal and written communication skills and having the ability to translate complex ideas into more colloquial terms in order for people to understand. So as you can see, communication skills is one of the most necessary skills that need to be developed so that you can stand out from the others. Then what else can you do? Well, there are certifications that you can get from LinkedIn and badges that you can put on your LinkedIn profile. So for example, here, you can see this is our LinkedIn page. And here, you can see that we have there is a learning hub. And this is provided by LinkedIn. In this learning hub, there are a number of different courses that, um, can, that are made available to you, uh, paying the LinkedIn premium price, which is very, very affordable, based on the things that you the things that you have based on your experience, based on your interests, et cetera. As you can see, this is my LinkedIn learning. And currently I am doing a Salesforce essential training program, but you also have skill assessments, which are basically not LinkedIn learning in which you have to pay LinkedIn premium to do, but skill assessments are done on your actual uh, profile page as you are editing your profile and you don't have to be paying the LinkedIn premium price in order to be able to use this. And for example, you have a skill assessment based on uh, the different skills that you have. So you say, well, you know what? I'm good at Excel and that's one of the skills that I, that I have specified on my CV. So I'm actually going to, to get a badge from LinkedIn, which makes, it, which makes me stand out from the rest because it proves, and it's a third party certification that I actually have this skill. And so you can do all of these. There are a bunch of different badges and certifications. These are just a few. Then you can also get certifications from specialized platforms, like for example, analytics. If any of you um, have ever worked on um, website optimization, for example, Google Analytics is one of the top tools that you will be, that you will be learning. And Google Analytics actually has the Google Analytics Academy, which allows you to uh, take these courses and then get a certification from Google saying that you are a specialist in Google Analytics. Or for example, Salesforce, as you've seen, I'm taking a Salesforce training uh, via LinkedIn. Salesforce itself also has a software 
program called Trails Head, Trailhead, which also allows you to get a certification specifying that you are specialized in Salesforce. And then of course, you can get accredited degrees from higher learning institutions. For example, here at SSPR, it's important to note that as, as a Swiss educator, Switzerland um, signed the Bologna Accord, which is basically an agreement that was made throughout a number of countries in Europe, I would say the majority of European countries, in order to ensure that across the European countries, the titles and the content are all aligned. So what does that mean? That when you get a degree from a Swiss school, you have an automatic um, diploma, no, shall I say, it is legally recognized in the other European countries that have signed the Bologna Accord. So for example, uh, let's say uh, the, United K the United Kingdom, let's say, okay, well, I'm thinking about moving to the UK uh, three years from now. And so I would like to ensure that my, my degree is going to be accredited when I move to the UK. So for example, in the UK, they recognize all of the, country, all of the um, degrees that come from countries that signed the Bologna Accord from the Europe. So that includes the European Union, Switzerland, Norway, Iceland, and Liechtenstein. And these are all uh, seen as an equivalent standard to the UK and therefore are officially recognized. And so all degrees from SSBR are fully accredited through the Bologna Accord and also from uh, different kinds of accreditation and uh, awarding bodies, which are EDUQUA and OTHM. And this is for this is the EDUQUA certificate, which is the authorization from the Swiss government specifying that uh, SSBR can provide certifications, accredited certifications uh, for these kinds of programs with the Swiss authorities. So as you can see here, and the OTHM qualifications, which is another awarding body that is based in the United Kingdom, as you can see here, and they have also approved and given, uh, and given SSBR the approval so that they can provide an accreditation from OTHM. So now that we have understood how we can stand out, now let's learn a bit more about LinkedIn. Let's become experts at LinkedIn. If you don't already have a LinkedIn profile, it is highly important that you open one today. Don't wait any longer. Why? LinkedIn is the number one professional networking platform. It is the go-to place for recruiters, uh, for any kind of person in any kind of professional field to find possible candidates and verify that that person is the right one with the right qualifications for that job. So. What is it that we need to consider? Us, we are looking for jobs, we are looking to stand out, and we want to accelerate our career. So there are five questions that we have to ask ourselves. Number one, do I have a profile? Number two, can a recruiter find me? Number three, will a recruiter pick me? Number four, am I contacting recruiters? And number five, do I follow up with people who view my profile? So let's take it one step at a time. First of all, do you have a profile? Well, you can say, well, professor, what if I have no experience? How am I gonna make a profile with no experience? It'll just be a, a waste of time. Completely the opposite. What you want to do with your LinkedIn page is showcase this, the different unique combination of skills. Who is, uh, who are you? And what can you bring to the professional world? So use and think about all of the, the responsibilities, the tasks, the jobs that you have undergone, even if it hasn't been a paying job, and showcase that in your in your uh, LinkedIn page. What could that be? Well, maybe you were captain of your of your sports team, and therefore that shows responsibility and drive. Or maybe you had a number of responsibilities that you had to take over at home, which again shows that you are able to work autonomously and that you can be responsible and get things done. Basically, all of these different uh, types of, shall we say, extracurricular activities or activities that you do in your day-to-day -day life without having, and without having gotten paid for it will actually show possible recruiters that you actually do know how to work as part of a team, you actually do know how to lead somebody, and you can take on responsibilities and um, become very, very well at your job. 
Then also pay attention to your technical to technical details. Now, what does that mean? Well, for example, what if your hobby is computer programming? That's what you do when you get home at the end of the day. Well, I actually had this situation at home. My husband, who is who is a manager at a big multinational company, he is I, he is an IT, and he actually hired on a person who had not had any experience in computer programming, but his hobby was computer programming. And so my husband said, look, it, it's, it's this person's passion. That's what they're doing every day when they get home. They don't, rather than doing anything else, what they want to do is program. And so this person is a safe bet and I know that they're going to do a good job. And lo and behold, my husband took a bet on this, on this uh, employee and now this employee has grown and grown and grown in his company. Then also think about any social work that you've done. Have you ever volunteered? Have you ever mentored anybody? Um, perhaps you have done, perhaps you have helped uh, students in your, in your um, high school grow. Perhaps you have given counseling to people who are in need. Whatever it may be, use all of this and put this all on your on your LinkedIn profile because it's going to show a lot more about you than you would actually think. And again, don't be afraid about being up front. You don't have any experience. We've all been there. We've all been entry level with no experience. And we've been there hoping that somebody would take a chance on this. So make sure that you're up front. Now with LinkedIn, you even have an option to put a badge around your, around your uh, portrait photo, which says open to work or uh, looking to work or waiting for new opportunities, whatever it may be, be upfront because people will be willing to contact you. So for example, this is my uh, public uh, LinkedIn profile. This is how you would see it if you enter my public profile. So you can see, I don't know why my picture doesn't come up here, um, but basically what is it that you have to include? First, include your full name, then include a title. What is it that you want people to see as soon as they go into your page? What are those skill sets, that important information about you that you want people to know about you as soon as they enter your page? Then include the, include the location in which you are, in which you uh, are currently. And then make sure that you also personalize your URL. Don't leave the default URL that LinkedIn will give you because when you go and you put it into your CV and you put it in other places, you want people to recognize the URL by your name and not by 1234FGCCC. And then make sure that your, your profile is, again, visible to everybody, to the public, okay? And then you will plug in all of your different experience. So step two, can a recruiter find you? Well, first think of all the, key, the keywords that are going to be specific to the relevant skills and or titles that you have had. Then add these keywords to your profile. You have the headline, as you can see. So the headline, let me just go back, is right here. This is my headline, marketing and business consultant, trilingual, et cetera. And your summary, your summary, is not coming up here, uh, but it is the about section. And then grow your network. What does that mean? Well, you can import your address book, all of those contacts that you already do have, bring them on to LinkedIn, and then start connecting with people maybe that you already know and you have worked with in the past or have gone to school with, for example, or your professors, you can connect with them on LinkedIn. And then as you go, slowly but surely, the list of contacts is going to grow, which is going to open up a lot more opportunities for you. So what does that look like? Well, for example, the list of keywords. Well, we can see that this person has experience working on e-commerce and mobile applications. So they are going to optimize their LinkedIn profile based on these keywords. And so we're going to add these keywords to the headline. So Mr. John Doe is an expert in e-commerce and mobile apps. And then he's going to grow his network by adding contacts. Third, are the recruiters going to pick you? If you do not put a professional looking photo or you're just cropping a photo or using a photo that you took somewhere else, a selfie, it's going to look really bad. And all that you have accomplished by 
making by having certifications, badges, et cetera, is gonna go down the drain if the photo that you have does not show you in a professional way. So I recommend make sure that the photo that you use on your LinkedIn profile is of you smiling. Even if you are shy and you are not very camera, camera uh, friendly or photogenic, attempt to smile and make sure that it's a genuine smile so that your eyes also are smiling. Don't make it look like something very forced because sometimes it's, if you're coming off very fake, it's better to not smile at all. Then uh, make sure that you include the job title that is similar to what it is to what you have as the keywords. If you have already had a, a job in this field, put that in your head, in your title as well. And then in the summary, explain, tell them who is John Doe, for example, who is John Doe? Um, what is John Doe's background? How did he get to become the person that he is today? And what is this person looking for? Question four, are you contacting recruiters? One of the great things that you have about LinkedIn is that you can find people who are looking to hire people for their job. So first, you can do an advanced search. So when you actually do a search on LinkedIn, you plug in, uh, for example, I want to know who works in uh, the greater Zurich area um, at the company Nestle. And you focus on that. And so you can start and look at all of those people that are on LinkedIn that work in this location uh, in this company. And you can also, if there is a web, if there is a um, job posting that has already been done, you can also find and identify the contact person that is handling the, con the recruitment process personally. And what can you do then? You send an invite, or if you have LinkedIn Premium, you can send an in-mail message. What does that mean? The in-mail message allows you to contact the person without having to be a connection first. If you don't have the in-mail option, if you don't have the LinkedIn Premium option, then you can only rely on people actually reading the invites. But I recommend that if you are looking to a to uh, find a job and you are currently in the midst of that, of that uh, part of your life, put the money in. I think it's in euros, it's roughly 30 euros a month or a little bit less than 30 euros a month. And it is worth it because you are going to have so many opportunities open up for you. So here you can see, this is a job posting that I found for a marketing manager. And here I can see, so I see the company Globe Educate, it's in Spain, it's remote. And I see here the person that's handling this recruitment process, Christina Gomez. And I can go here because I have LinkedIn Premium and I can send her an email directly. So not only can I send my, my CV through this apply now button, but I can then follow up and send a personalized message to Miss Christina Gomez saying, hi, I have just sent you my CV. Um, my skill sets are blah, blah, blah. And I would love to have an opportunity to speak with you. If we can connect through here, that would be fantastic. Let's take five minutes to chat. And number five, do you follow up with people who view your profile? Many times when we have our LinkedIn page, we think that it's just a matter of having the profile there and then it's gonna work by itself. Not at all. You have to put in the time, you have to put in the work. So what is, the, what is this uh, aspect of LinkedIn allow you to see? Well, it allows you to see who has been viewing your profile. So here I can go, and this is not part of premium. I can see who has viewed my profile. If I pay premium, what it does is it allows me to see the people who usually are hidden, who do not share their profile as uh, visible, and it allows me to see them. So here, for example, I can see that I have my two colleagues at SSBR who have uh, recently seen my, seen my LinkedIn page. And so I can message them directly. Okay, well, since I already work with them, I'm not gonna take any action. But if, for example, it's the person here, one person with the job title recruiter, well, I would probably be interested in looking and contacting that person and saying, hey, well, I saw that you were on my LinkedIn page. I would love to speak with you. Is, it, is there a specific skill set that you are looking for? I'm looking for new opportunities in, in my profession, so please reach out. It's many times when we are in the job recruitment process, it's about putting in the time, 
and making sure that all of this finer, smaller details are taken care of, then actually having this uh, very visual graphic uh, CV. There are many people who even do video CVs now. And yes, that's great. It's very, it's entertaining, it's visual, but that's not the important thing. The important thing is learning how you can use these tools and in what way you have to be able to, you have to be speaking to recruiters so that they end up uh, looking to hire you. So how can we take all of this and make it, make our career better? Well, we have lots of opportunities here at SSBR. At SSBR, as you know, we are specialized in business programs, and we have a number of different programs available. We have a bachelor's program, master's program, doctorate of business administration, a PhD by portfolio, and a traditional PhD. And it's important for us to understand and remember that businesses nowadays are not so much um, set in their ways and just hire somebody on and have them uh, on their workforce for 20 or 30 years until they retire. This is a thing of the past and it no longer happens. Why does that happen? Because we are in the VUCA world, V-U-C-A. We are in a volatile, uncertain, chaotic, and accelerated world in which everything happens at such a fast pace that businesses are looking for people who have this strategic mindset and these skill sets that allow them to become easily adaptable, they can think on their feet, they can make quick decisions, and they can understand how the business world is has to be um, treated today. And this is what our business programs do. Um, we can see that due to the current pandemic, it's up, it's uh, taken a huge toll on the business market and basically on every every different type of facet of our of our daily lives but it's become even more important for organizations to become adaptable and to make decisions on the fly. So the business programs that we have designed here at SSBR help to deepen a person's understanding of how businesses work, how markets work, how value can be created through innovating and how you can craft marketing strategies, uh, corporate strategies, and many, many, many other things. SSBR is also a leading innovation and technologies business school. We have the Certified Google Educator um, Achievement Award, which basically allows us to successfully integrate a different number, a very wide range of Google tools that are used specifically for education. And it allows us to use other technologies in order to transform teaching and really um, be able to use this in keeping with the mission of our school, which is to use all of the technologies and tools that we have available to us to help our students grow and not the other way around. Of course, this allows all students to get a much deeper understanding of the G Suite and to advance their technological skills. So what are just a few of the reasons why um, this is important in a business, in a person's professional life? Well, it's uh, digital skills are one of the most important skills today. And by using this when you are in school, it allows you to get confident with all of these different types of tools. It allows for facil facilitation and inspiring students to learn and become creative. Of course, it has a lower impact on, on uh, the environment because we create a paperless classroom. It also allows us to collect data and increase feedback loops. So the information with you is much more personalized. It helps you learn how to find answers and support. It increases digital citizenship and digital literacy for everybody. It increases efficiency. It helps you save time. It proves your skills. It allows you to engage in growing professionally and developing your leadership skills. And of course, it allows you to get the badge and join a Google certified family. Another thing that helps us to stand out at SSBR is that we do not give exams. We are an entirely practical learning methodology. What does that mean? That doesn't mean that you're not gonna have to work hard. That means that you basically learn by putting things into practice immediately. So all of the different um, courses that you have have a number of practical assignments that you have to submit. Uh, some courses, there are two assignments. Some courses, there are four or five assignments. It depends on the subject matter. But basically, they are all practical assignments 
based on case studies, real life case studies that you will need to work on and you will submit based on the concepts that you have learned. Now, uh, of course, this requires, this requires uh, really having a deeper understanding of the different concepts that you are learning. However, since they are not exams, we don't want you to memorize and then just go to the exam, spit it out, and that's it, you're done. We want you to understand these, to interiorize them, and then to work on these assignments and resubmit them until you feel that you have perfected them and you have really learned these concepts. The faculty here at SSBR are all real, we all have real industry experience. So all of us, not just me, but everybody at SSBR, not only do we have a strong academic background, but we also have real life professional experience in the subject area that we teach. And also our faculty have been strategically recruited from different parts of the world. Why? Because we want to provide a comprehensive view of the world. We don't want you to just know and learn how it is that we do what things in, in, uh, in Europe or how we do things in America or how we do things in the Middle East. We want our students to get a very comprehensive, multicultural understanding of the business world. And this is done by, by learning from professionals who are located in different uh, parts of the world. Now, of course, we have an international uh, faculty body. Well, it goes without saying that we also have a diverse student body. We have currently over 50 nationalities, as you can see here, with many, with many students coming from uh, different parts of the world. We also are a truly online school. What does that mean? That you have access to your study materials 24 seven. You are fully flexible with everything that you, that you will be doing. Our intakes or enrollments happen throughout the year. They're not just limited to September. So you have a flexible start date that can be, that can be modified based on what it is that you need. For example, we are doing, we are currently uh, accepting enrollments for our winter intake for classes that begin in January. You also have the possibility to submit assignments at your own pace. So what does that mean? Well, when you are in my Google Classroom, for example, you will see that when you begin the term with me, uh, Professor Laura Perez has posted a number of due dates for the assignments. Now, that does not mean that you are required to submit the assignments on that specific date. That means that you can submit the assignments uh, prior to that date, or you can submit the assignments later on to that date, because we truly are able to be completely flexible and allow you to work at your own pace. So for example, there are two months that you are very busy with other aspects of your life and you cannot um, submit assignments, that's okay. You, can, you will still have access to the classes. You can look at the, at the class recordings at your own time, at your own convenience, and then submit the assignments when you feel that you are ready to do so. You can also view the recorded classes at your convenience, and you also have personal mentoring with your professor. Why? Because we do, uh, we have one-to-one -one, uh, contact through Google Classroom, and we also have, we also schedule as professors, we schedule live sessions with all of our classes. So for example, uh, next week I'm having a live session with my strategic uh, management class. And so at that time, basically we organize it have for half an hour and within half an hour, we have time to connect live, to be able to talk about specific content that needs to be clarified or uh, questions about the assignment. Or we've even had situations where people explain to me how they have put into practice what it is that they just learned. And so these live sessions really give you so much added value because it's not just about a professor standing in front of the class, spewing out information, blah, 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 and that's it. And as you've already seen, we are a fully accredited school. Not only do we have the EDUQA and OTHM qualifications, we also have the OFQAL, which is the Office of Qualifications and Examinations Regulation Certification, which regulates qualifications, examinations, and assessments in England as well. So these are our online programs here at SSBR. You can discover our online programs here on this chat. I would like to thank you so much. Are there any questions? I see that we have questions on the chat. 
if you have questions, you can just open your microphone and, and ask me. Victor. Oh, well, thank you. I'm so happy that you really benefited from this. Andrew, you are using Google Classroom. I am so happy. I'm so happy that you are enjoying Google Classroom. I know that it's one of the best things uh, that we have here at SSBR. And you have already used part of the content in the training to a board of directors who needed insights. I, took, I am so happy to hear that, Andrew. Omnibus, I presume that's not your name, but that's your Zoom name. Thank you, thank you so much uh, for that compliment. Imika, the fastest that you can complete the PhD by portfolio. Okay, the PhD by portfolio is one of our most innovative programs here at SSBR because the PhD by portfolio is a PhD that is obtained through the work that you have already done. It's not obtained through research like most traditional PhD. And you do still get the doctor. So you still become a doctor. So Emeka, you would be Dr. Emeka Chukwure. And I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. Um, the PhD by portfolio, the average time that students take to complete it is 12 to 18 months. But of course, this um, depends on the time that you are able to dedicate to uh, doing the PhD by portfolio. So the, the fastest um, people that have gotten through the PhD by portfolio have gotten through it in one year, even though on average it takes from 12 to 18 months. But in the end, it will really depend on how quick you can get through it, of course. And of course, um, how much time you need to spend on uh, revising, because that's what I'm there for. And when you guys submit the, the work that you have done, I then review it. I give you guys pointers. Well, look, develop this a little bit more in, con in full, et cetera, et cetera, until it's gotten um, perfect or you feel that it's completely perfect. Any other questions? You'd like to start in spring 2022? Okay, so then what we can do, Emeka, is I will let the admissions department know so that they can contact you and you guys can, and they can explain to you how this would work. And you can actually, you can actually benefit from, for example, beginning the program in spring, but you can, all, you can enroll in the winter and you would already have access to my live sessions. So for example, you say, well, professor, I know that due to my workload, I'm not gonna be able to start writing or doing anything until spring, but you can join me in the live sessions, then that would be something that could be possible for you. This is something that I'll have admissions reach out to you for. Dr. Tukumbo Akerdolu Ali. I'm sorry, I know I'm mispronouncing your name. Nice to meet you. It's much nicer name than Omnibus <laughs> Global. The PhD by portfolio is recognized. It's, again, like I explained, the, the degrees are not recognized globally because at the end of the day, it's about the governments that are um, that are recognizing the degrees. However, like I explained, the SSBR is part of the Swiss uh, education authorization. So uh, since Switzerland signed the Bologna Accord, it is automatically valid in other parts of Europe, uh, such as the UK, for example. If you needed to get it uh, validated in other countries, what I would recommend is that you can either ask us because we have gotten some accreditations of um, countries from across the globe that are not part of the Bologna Accord. And if not, you can also contact your uh, local authorities, your Ministry of Education, for example, and they would explain to you what the homologization process is. However, I'll be happy to share with you at the end of um, at the end of the call, I will share with you guys on this chat and uh, a blog post that uh, we posted up about accreditations and how this uh, validation process is. Um, you're welcome, Emeka. Uh, Reem Dada Husseini, nice to meet you. Can a PhD by portfolio be used to teach at universities? Yes, of course. You are obtaining a PhD, just like any other PhD. And it's even more valuable because you are obtaining it because you've actually done the work, not because you've just researched it. Many times, um, 
I'm sure you guys have found in your professions, if you have already done, I'm sure that Remy, you've already been working, that many times what happens is that the theory is one thing, but putting into practice is very different. And so the people who have actually learned the theory and put into practice are much better versed, have much more knowledge to share with students than um, people who have acquired the PhD just by research. So of course you can use it. Rohan, uh, thank you for a great session. I'm interested in the PhD. Would I be able to complete that in business management? Um, Rohan, what do you mean? I understand the PhD by portfolio, but what do you mean? Are you meaning that you want to do PhD specialized in business management? Oh, yeah, sorry about that, Professor. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's correct. So you would be interested in getting the PhD by portfolio in business management. Yeah, okay. Yes, Absolutely. that's not, yes, actually, since our school is specialized in business, that's what our degrees are for. So the PhD by portfolio is based on, uh, based on business and strategic business. For example, the PhD by portfolio is made up of three modules in which there are a number of um, assignments in each specific part of the module. And so all of the assignments, they are geared towards one specific aspect of business or another, but they all relate to business management. So the PhD by portfolio that you would obtain would be in business. And yes, you can begin in September of 2022, like I said, and like I told um, Emeka, if you guys want to already be in the program and start to have the live sessions with me, even if you're not gonna be able to start putting pen to paper until later on, you can do that as well. I will also have admissions reach out to you as well, Rohan. Um, your, Thank Rohan, you very you, much. You're very welcome. Yeah. Please tell Sorry, me go ahead. the name that you registered under for the live session, was it Rohan as well? Yes, Rohan, the name is actually Rohan Dubri. Okay, perfect. So I'll make sure that admissions gets that as well. Okay, Andrew. That's more. You're welcome, Rohan. Andrew, okay, what is the least time that one can spend on the MBA? I am currently not that busy, so I want to dedicate time to it. Okay, that's great. You can work on the MBA and you can spend as much or as little time as you want. Again, since it's a flexible uh, program, you don't have to, you don't have to take on, for example, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do five courses this month and I wanna do no courses next month because I'm not busy. You can do it at your own pace. Since you, um, for example, when you get put on the MBA program, what you do is you get access to all of the classes. So you get put onto each Google Classroom of the course that you are taking as part of the MBA. And then you go through the videos, you go through the videos as, um, as you are able to, because they are already there on the Google Classroom. And then you also get an announcement of when that professor has a live session coming up. So the only thing that you would, you would need to wait on, basically, is the live sessions, because those are scheduled specific uh, times during the term. But everything else, you can get through it as quickly or as slowly as you want. So for example, if you say, well, this month, this month I want to uh, do, um, I don't know, uh, for assignments, you can do that. What uh, most students, if you can spend a lot of time, you, you have more time available to do it, you can actually complete it within six months. Um, of course, if you're not working a 48 hour, 40 hour work week, for example. Okay. I don't know if there are any other questions. Okay, well, I wanna thank you guys so much for joining me live. It was such a pleasure to be able to be in contact with you. I'm very much looking forward to having a few of you on my program as a mentor. Let's see who else. You're very welcome. Thank you. Uh, I look forward to seeing all of you. And tomorrow you guys will get a replay because I have been recording the session. So you will get a replay. So if you haven't, um, been able to interiorize everything. Uh, tomorrow you'll have it so you can come back to this video as many times as you need. Take care, everybody.
Bye bye. Rim, my contact. Yes, of course. This is my um, contact email, and you can contact me anytime. Yes. You're very welcome, Rohan. Um, Rim, okay. In order to check which PhD is good for me, okay. If you want, you can send me an email. Uh, I will also share your contact with the admissions uh, team so that they can contact you directly and also set up a consultation and speak with you about what it is exactly that you're looking for so um, they can advise which program would be more suited for you because we also have the traditional PhD program in business management. So you may be want to see. You can't see my email address. Okay, hold on. Oh, it looks like I was sending it privately. Here you go. Okay. Okay. So thank you guys. I, again, uh, look forward to seeing you guys in my class modules. And I hope to be able to connect with you again very, very soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.